Hi, I'm Andrew, and welcome to the Neon Knitter. So this is going to be episode 9 of the Neon Knitter podcast. So, as you can see, I'm not wearing any knitwear today. I am filming this on July 27th, I think. Yeah, July 27th. And um, here in the Twin Cities where I live, um, I live in St. Paul, Minnesota. We've had 90 degree weather this week. Not, and that's 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So, I'm not going to be wearing knitwear in this episode. And usually I obsessively wear knitwear in my podcast episodes. Even if it's 80 degrees out. I'll usually just rip the knitwear off when I'm done filming, of course. But if it's 80 degrees out. But... 90 degrees, we pull the plug, no knitwear, I'm just wearing a shirt, and it is what it is. Maybe in the future, once I get some summer tops done, maybe I can wear those, but yeah. Anyways, so let's get into episode 9 of the Neon Knitter podcast, and when we get to whips, I will give you my update on my contrast blast socks okay um and why i haven't gotten my clue 2 video out yet spoiler i'm still on clue 2 so yeah i'll get into that but anyways so i don't have any finished objects for you guys and the reason is i have less knitting time during the summer than i do the rest of the year Because I work more hours during the summer than I do the rest of the year. So, naturally, I don't have as much time to knit. And so, in September, my hours get reduced a little bit. I'll have more time to knit. So, then the number of podcast episodes should hopefully increase. Um, yeah. So, I'm going to start with my first whip. This is a whip that hasn't gotten very much progress at all. Um, I've done maybe like two or three rounds. I don't know, since I've, since I've shown it to you last. Unless I've worked on it and I don't remember that I've worked on it, I suppose. This is my orange zest sweater, or that's what I'm calling it. The pattern is Southwood by Golf House of Yarn. Um... And here's the yarn I'm using. This is I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby in the colorway Orange Zest. So I think I've mentioned to you guys before that one of my big obsessions with knitting is buying really cool random looking yarns that I just knit the absolute most plain sweater pattern out of. And... This is a medium weight number four, or a worsted or an Aran weight. And I have quite a few yarns in my stash that are for plain sweaters like that, and they're all going to be the same pattern, Southwood by Gold House of Yarn. Well, here's the problem with that. If I just all call them my... if Let me try again. If I call all of them my Southwood sweaters, it's going to be kind of confusing to know which one I'm talking about, so I'm going to have to name them after the yarns I'm using, so I'm going to call this my Orange Zest sweater. Now, I don't know why this is called Orange Zest. I don't see Orange Zest whatsoever. I don't know what Hobby Lobby was thinking when they named this. Um because I don't see orange zest at all. Um, I've shown this yarn to numerous people, and they have not seen orange zest in it either. So, don't know where the name came from. But, uh, I blame Hobby Lobby for the name of this yarn. So, I don't know. But it's called orange zest. And, um, yeah. So, yeah, that is my first whip. Alright, my second whip 
spoiler alert, is my Contrast Blast socks. So if you are still not done with Clue 2, um, look away, come back later. If you are past Clue 2, then you are welcome to look at this. And if you're not done with Clue 2, but you look at the spoilers, great. Then go ahead and look. Alright, so here's where I'm at. I have just finished the woven slips. And I mentioned in my Clue 1 video that I'm actually knitting the left sock first. And in the video, Steven is knitting the right sock. Um, but yeah, I explain why I'm knitting the left sock if you go watch my Clue 1 video. And if you want to know more about my yarns, go watch my intro video for the surprise sock along. Um, but the red is... And I show the labels and I show all the things, okay? in my intro video, so I'm not going to pull that all out, but the red is Lucy Neat Bee Celestial Merino Dream in the colorway Scarlet, and the yellow is Sundara Yarn Sock in the colorway Daffodil. Um, and of course I have my sock project bag, it's of course got zebras on it, because y'all know I'm obsessed with zebras. Um, and this is the smallest project bag I have, other than maybe my Mystery Knit Along project bag from last year, because that was definitely not a shawl sized bag. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I think when Stephen and Penelope posted on Instagram that they had a couple left over from Knit Along, I think I made a comment on the Instagram post saying, hey, next year can you actually have the bag be shawl sized? Thank you. So we'll see if that's actually a thing, but I commented that they should have it actually be a shawl sized bag. Um, but yeah, so this is, so far my Contrast Blast socks, um, and once I get Clue 2 done, I will definitely make a Clue 2 video, but I still gotta do the heel before Clue 2 is done. I have not been looking at the spoilers, so hopefully I don't accidentally see one on Instagram, because sometimes stuff like that comes on my homepage on Instagram due to me being part of three different West Knits Ravelry groups, or Ravelry, Facebook groups. I'm, I am part of the West Knits Ravelry group, but, um, no, I'm on three different unofficial West Knits Facebook groups, so, yeah. Anyways, then, my current most active whip which is in my brand new project bag that I just bought at the mall last weekend. This isn't officially a project bag, it's technically a handbag, but I thought this was a really cute bag, so I bought it. It's got squishy handles, it's got nice shoulder strap. Um, yeah, so, um, so guys, my second love is actually shoes, and so I was actually at DSW when I saw this, so I bought this at DSW. Um, I haven't really talked about shoes on this channel at all, but um, we'll get more into that later. Um, not probably in this podcast episode. But, yeah, I bought this bag at DSW, in case you're wondering. And it's by Mix Number 6, and... Um, yeah, on my receipt, it rang up as Super Puffy Tote Bag. So, that's what it's apparently called. But this is the bag that I have my Bright Axis T in. So, yeah, this is my whip that I'm actively working on right now. This is my Bright Axis T. So, this is the Bright Axis T by Stephanie Lopevin of Tilly Bean Knits. And, sorry, the handle of my bag is in the frame. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is the Bright Axis Tea by Stephanie Lopevin. She is known as Chili Bean Knits. Um, and this is a very significant piece for me. It checks off three things. 
This is my very first summer top, my very first fingering white sweater, and my very first bottom-up garment. So, yeah, I'm very excited about this. And I thought this was a perfect time to film the podcast episode. I just finished my first skinny yarn. So, I almost started my second skinny yarn, but I'm like, oh, well, I haven't filmed the podcast in a while. I better do that. So, here's the second one I'm about to start. Um, but yeah, here is the yarn I'm using. This is Mode Knit Yarn Mode Work Fingering. It is two ply. It is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards. The color is called Coal. C O A L. I have two skeins of it. And that's my main color. And then here's my contrast color. Um, yes, this box got really beat up. I know. I'm planning on taping it at some point because I keep all my yarn labels. But this is Earth Yarn's unique fingering, or unique sock, excuse me. Uh, yeah, I don't even see where it says unique sock, because it says it on top here, but... Earth Yarn's unique sock. Yeah, it's all beat up, so... But this is the 2021 Pantone colorway, the gray and yellow. And that is my contrast color for the yoke of the sweater. Super excited about that. Um, but yeah, it's basically, I bought that yarn and I didn't know what to do with it, but I thought it was really pretty. And I really like gray and yellow together. Now that's a light gray, whereas my main color is a dark gray, so. Yeah. Here, let me pull out one of the cakes of yarn. Yep. So I think that's really pretty together. Now, if you're not familiar with Earth Yarn's unique sock, it comes with two 50 gram cakes, and the idea is that you make matching socks. And the socks are supposed to knit up like this. I didn't want to make socks out of it. So. I decided to make a sweater instead. So, basically, I was at my local library. Yeah, I was at the library uh, a couple months ago, and I found a book. It is called Knit Happy with Self-Striping Yarn, and it is obviously by Stephanie Lopevin. And the Bright Axis T pattern is in that book, so I actually copied this pattern out of a library book. And, um, yeah, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, ding, that is exactly what I'm going to make out of that yarn. I just need to pick my solid, uh, main color. And so you guys might remember that I bought this yarn from Moden It at the St. Cloud Spin Fest back in June. And, yeah, so this project has a deadline. I need to get this done before the end of September. I forget the exact date. But um, I have a yarn, another yarn festival coming up, or yarn convention. It is called Yarn Over. It is put on by the Minnesota Knitters Guild. Um, I've never been before. This is my first year going. And while I'm there, I plan to get my mystery knit along yarns. I already know what dye are and what base. I just haven't picked the colors yet because I want to see what she has in person. But I'll talk more about that uh, later. Not in this episode, but when we get closer to the MCAL. Um, but Mode Knit Yarn will be bending, and so I want to wear this to show them what I made out of their yarn. And in the future, my plan is to, whenever I go to a yarn festival, which I have four I go to every year, um... My goal is to wear, or my goal is to wear what I bought yarn for the previous year. Obviously, if I have not been to this one before, I didn't buy anything at it last year because I've never been. So, 
I'm just going to be showing off something from one of the dyers that will be there. So, yeah. So, that is my Bright Axis T. Okay. Now we're going to get into acquisitions. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much what I have. So, acquisitions, and then that's pretty much it for content. I have quite a few acquisitions. Starting with what I bought over Independence Day weekend. So, I went to visit my grandparents over Independence Day weekend. And they live in central Wisconsin. And... They're not very far. They're maybe about half hour, 45 minutes from Stevens Point, Wisconsin. And there is, at least in the United States, a major online yarn retailer that quite a few YouTubers have unboxed stuff from before. I can think of numerous people. Um, Bago de Crochet. Um... Cinnamon Stitches, I can think of numerous different channels that have unboxed from this company before, but their physical brick and mortar store is in Stevens Point, Wisconsin, and that would be Hirschner's. So you guys are probably familiar with Hirschner's. If you're not, go check them out on their website. And if you happen to be in Stevens Point, Wisconsin, definitely go check them out. Stevens Point actually has two yarn stores, so they have Hirschner's and they also have the Wisconsin Wool Exchange. Hopefully, when I visit my grandparents over Christmas, I can maybe make it to the Wisconsin Wool Exchange, but small problem. They're closed on Sundays, so... Actually, no, not Sunday. Monday. I went on Monday the 3rd. Um, yeah, they're closed on Mondays, so... I think they're open on Sundays. I'm not sure, though. But they're closed on Mondays. I think they're closed on Sundays, too. I don't know. Don't quote me, you can just look up the Wisconsin Wall Exchange hours on their website or on Google, because I don't remember for sure. All I know is they're closed on Mondays, and so it didn't work out to go there. But the point of going to Stevens Point was to go to Hershner's anyways, because I knew what I wanted to get there. Guys, I am a Green Bay Packers fan, and I've been wanting to make myself a Green Bay Packers sweater. And, you know, it's going to be Southwood by Gull House of Yarn. Same pattern as my orange zest sweater. Yep. But all the companies that make sports team yarn, um, a lot of the sports team yarns are actually discontinued. So, like Red Heart Team Spirit no longer exists. That's discontinued. But all the sports team yarn I can find is all similar to that. And... The Red Heart Team Spirit, that was a self-striping yarn. And so it made big blocks of color. So if I'm a Green Bay Packers fan, I know I live in Minnesota, but my family's from Wisconsin. So, yeah. Um, but you have big, huge block of yellow, big, huge block of green, big, huge block of yellow, big, huge block of green. And you get the idea. And I don't love knitting plain sweaters out of self-striping yarn because I then have to figure out, I have to keep counting how many rounds are in each stripe so that I can then cut the colors apart and make my sleeves match. And I just don't love having to color control my sleeves. So that turned me away from doing that. Well, then I discovered that Hershner's has a sports team yarn that is a medium weight number four worsted weight acrylic yarn um and i've seen it in person before because another knitting friend of mine um uh, also happened to be a packers fan and ordered one and even if they weren't a packers fan they were vikings fan or a different sports team fan it wouldn't matter what colorway of it they had they happened to have the green and yellow one 
I saw it in person and realized that, oh, this would be perfect for a Packer sweater. So, this is Hershner's MPV Worsted 8. And that's 8 because it's an 8-ounce skein. Let's see. This is 226 grams, 100% acrylic, medium weight number 4. Um, yeah. Uh, 489 yards. And also a nice thing about Hershner's is they do these little stickers they put on there. It's easy start. I'm still probably going to wind this into a ball before I knit with it because I do not enjoy this type of skein. But anyways, here's the yarn. Look how perfect that is for my sweater pattern I want to do. It's not self-striping, so I don't have to try to make the sleeves match. It's perfect. Okay, so my next acquisition is also from Hershner's. So, before I show it to you, Hershner's, they have kind of sort of two parts to the store. They have the main storefront, which just looks like a normal store. And that's, of course, where I found my Green Bay Packer yarn. Oh, I didn't mention the color is literally just called green and gold. Yeah. But that's where I found this. They also have, in the back, a warehouse. Now, most of the warehouse is staff only. And it's just... Um extra inventory of different products but part of the warehouse the front part of it is open to the public and they have some stuff on discount in there and it's kind of like clearance and all sorts of things and so I found this yes this yarn came in this little case um, this is Trendsetter Yarns Transitions Tweed. 52% cotton, 48% acrylic, 660 yards. Um, 5.25 ounces. It doesn't say how many grams it is, but... Um, let me see here. This is color number... 47T. There's the color number 47T. And yeah, let me unzip this so you guys can see the yarn better. It's a gradient cake. That is really beautiful. Different shades of brown. Well, they call it brown chocolate and taupe. So yeah. I guess chocolate is a shade of brown and taupe is very similar to brown, I guess. But here's what the yarn looks like. It's very stringy. I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, or have ever used Red Heart uh, It's a Wrap Rainbow or Red Heart It's a Wrap Sprinkles or any of those. But it reminds me of Red Heart, it's a wrap rainbow, for whatever reason. Um, yeah. And I already know what I'm going to make out of it. I'm blanking on the name of the pattern and the designers, so I'll just put it on the screen. But there was only one sweater, it was a summer top, that called for this yarn. Now, I'm going to mention that I wanted to make a plain summer top out of it but due to the fact that it's a gradient uh, cake of yarn I wanted to do something that wouldn't screw up the gradient fade meaning that if I had to do sleeves it would kind of screw it up so I wanted to find something that called for this yarn or called for a different gradient cake of yarn so that I could make it work well, I found something that calls for this yarn. 
but it's not plain. It's the only pattern I can find that calls for this yarn. That is a summer top. And that, it's got um, lace detailing on the bottom, and it's got um, a little bit of a pattern on the yoke. I'm going to omit the lace detailing on the bottom, and the pattern on the yoke is more or less just it's got yarn overs for the increases. And I'm going to eliminate that and just do like regular like make ones or whatever so that it can be a very plain summer top. But I wanted something that called for the gradient cake of yarn so that I could, you know, properly get the most out of my gradient cake of yarn. But yeah, apologies that I'm blanking on the designer and the name of the pattern but i will put it on the screen just note that i'm going to be modifying the pattern and i'm sort of just basing it off of this pattern okay so that is it for what i bought at hershner's but i'm not done with acquisitions yet let me just set this aside here so that i have more space here So, uh, thought I had it here. My next acquisition. Maybe not. Oh, there it is. Okay, perfect. So, this past weekend, I took a trip to Stephen B., which, if you guys are wondering, Stephen B. is one of my local yarn stores. They are located in Minneapolis. Yep, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, if you're ever visiting the Twin Cities and you only have time to go to one yarn store, Stephen B. is definitely the one to go to. Um, maybe someday I'll make a video there. Who knows? Might be in the very distant future, though. I'm not sure. Um, but, uh, so I'm going to preface this with this particular weekend, I always like to go to Stephen B. So this past weekend was July 20th and 20, no, let me think. It was the... 22nd and 23rd yes july 22nd and 23rd was this past weekend and that is i think the third weekend in july if i'm not mistaken or is it the second i don't know anyways i always like to go to Stephen b that weekend because my birthday was a few days ago my birthday is july 25th in case you guys are wondering but that was, of course, on Tuesday, and I, of course, had to go to work for my birthday. I had to go to work. Nothing I can do about it. Had to make money. But, yeah. I'm officially 20. Yay. <laughs> so, yeah, my 20th birthday was on Tuesday. And I always go to Stephen B. for my birthday. Because um, it's what I enjoy doing. And I go and I sit and knit for a little bit. So yeah, I'm going to show you what I bought while I was there. Starting with what I grabbed from their free bin. Because right by the door at Stephen B, they have a bin full of stuff they're just trying to get rid of. And it's just labeled free. And you can just grab whatever you want from there. Um, and so I grabbed some of this stuff. It's what you would usually make ruffle scarves out of. Um, yeah, it's kind of like mesh. Yeah, it's black and silver. And oftentimes the stuff in the free bin, sometimes it's partial skeins. And sometimes it's skeins that are missing their labels. And sometimes it's just stuff that they just aren't selling and they're just trying to get rid of. Yeah. But I grabbed three balls of this. I don't even think they're full balls of it. I don't even know. These are how they were wound. This is all they had of it. I don't know. 
I'm not looking to make a ruffle scarf at all, and if this wasn't free, I wouldn't have bought it. But I'm thinking maybe I'll do some sort of a sweater with ruffly sleeves. I don't know. I'm not sure what weight of yarn I want to knit the sweater out of. But I'm thinking of doing a sweater with some, like, ruffly sleeves. Maybe I'll do some ruffles on the, like, the bottom, like, hem at the bottom there. I don't know. I don't think I'll do any ruffles at the neckline. Because, uh, A, I don't think I'll have enough. And, B, I think that'd be a little annoying and tickly against my neck. So maybe I wouldn't do anything down here. Maybe I would just do it on the sleeves. I don't know. But, anyways, I feel like it needs to be a bottom-up garment somehow. I don't know. So I haven't sorted out what I'm going to actually make out of this. But that's just one idea I have. But this was free, so I grabbed it. Um, I'll figure it out. Then... I got this as well. I have 10 skeins in here. They're all the same. This is... Skisel Cheerio. Color number 5. And this is discontinued if you're wondering. But this is 100% polyamide, which I believe is the same thing as nylon. 68 yards, 25 grams. Um, and it is a bulky number five weight. It is super unique. It's almost like a papery material. Obviously, we know it's nylon, but... But yeah, it's super unique, and it's got these blue and red flowers on it. Yeah, super unique. I have ten skeins of it. And I have a pattern picked out. I'm going to be... I think I know what the name of it is. It's a drops pattern. I think it's called Golden Treasure, I think. Yeah, Golden Treasure by Drops Design. And... <clears throat> I'm going to put a picture on the screen. And if I'm wrong, then I will put the correct name of it on the screen. But I'm pretty sure I'm correct. That it is Golden Treasure by Drops Design. And, uh, yeah. So that is Skisel Cheerio. And then, the final acquisition, which is the yarn I actually went there for, is this. This is Cascade Yarns Aereo in color number 19 color number 19 this is an Aaron weight yarn according to Ravelry um this is 47% superwash merino well it doesn't say it's superwash it just says merino 47% merino wool, 31% baby alpaca, 22% nylon, 100 grams, 240 yards. Um, hand wash, cold, lay flat to dry. Um, yeah. So, this is really pretty green. And I got six skeins of it. Yep, six skeins of it. I think that's going to be really pretty as a sweater. And I'm going to be knitting the Drop Shoulder Sweater by Hey Cindy. It's a free pattern, Drop Shoulder Sweater by Hey Cindy. Um, yeah, um, now, this is not going to be a plain sweater. I'll show you what I'm going to do in a second here. But if this was going to be a plain sweater, I would just knit Southwood by Gull House of Yarn. But what I'm about to show you, I don't like the idea of doing with a raglan. I would rather do it with a drop shoulder, so that's why I found this pattern. 
But guys, when I'm done knitting this sweater, I'm going to embellish it with flower-shaped buttons. It's going to be really fun. I'm going to sew flower-shaped buttons all over the front of it and on the sleeves. Not on the back of it, obviously, but... I've been to the mall a couple of times recently, and I've seen a bunch of sweaters that have 3D flowers on them, and I think they look really cool, and so I got inspired to make my own 3D flower sweater. Um, so, yeah, I think that's going to be really fun. And so, I've got seven different colors of them. Bear with me here. Bear with me here to make sure I grabbed one of each. I did, perfect. So, I've got white. I've got pink. I've got orange. I've got yellow. Green. Blue. And purple. Those are the seven different colors I have. And yes, the Lamode buttons are the same ones. If you look at the back of it, it's manufactured by the same company as the Spectrum Warm and Spectrum Cool ones. So, it's all the same company. So, these are the same. Um, I have two packages of each of them, so I have four of each color. Except for orange, because the store i got these at joann's and um my local joann's didn't have all of them in stock in the quantity i needed so there there was one store in my area that did have all of them in stock in the quantity i needed until i placed my order then they were like oh actually we only have one pack of the orange ones in stock so sorry we're canceling one of the packs so, I should have a package from Joann's coming in the mail at some point. They were very apologetic about it and gave me a free shipping code. It's just what they automatically do when they cancel something from an in-store pickup. So, I ordered it online, and so I should have one package of orange buttons coming in the mail at some point. Otherwise, I have, you know, two packages of all the other ones. So... I will have two packages of orange, just not right now. But the idea is that I'm going to put 14 buttons on the front of it. And so two of each color, I'm just going to randomize it. And then I'm going to put one of each color on, this, on each sleeve. So that's going to be fun. And this is going to almost look like grass. So I think that's going to be really cool. Yeah, so that's my final acquisition. But yeah, I went to Stephen B. because of my birthday. And I had a really nice birthday. Went out for dinner on Tuesday for my birthday. Me and my family went to Red Robin. And we really enjoyed that. So, yeah. Um, and now I'm 20, so yay. Um, anyways... That's all I have for this episode. So I'm Andrew. Thank you for checking in here at the Neon Knitter. And I will see you in my next video.